the best in the world podcast with Richard Parr. Hello and welcome to the 100th episode of the best in the world with Richard Parr. I am so glad we have made it here. I think we can all agree there have been some amazing lessons learnt over the 100 world and Olympic champions, world record holders and world number ones that I've had the pleasure of speaking to over the last two years. Thank you if you've been part of this journey so far. Thank you if you're listening for the very first time. If you do enjoy this podcast, please go back and listen to some of the others that I have produced before. It's all at Acast, iTunes, Stitcher and of course at sportsachino.com. And I think we'll all agree that it's a perfect guest for the 100th episode. It is the fastest woman in the world. It's Tori Bowie. You might remember at the 2017 World Championships in London, Tori dipped to the line in dramatic fashion to win the 100 metres title. It was an incredible visual spectacle and a real perfect way for her to continue her journey in her career. She was a bronze medalist at the last World Championships. She won silver in Rio de Janeiro and finally took gold in London. And we talk about that journey. We talk about how she transitioned as a long jumper. She also talks about her year ahead in 2018. And I ask her, out of all the medals she's won, because she's also been a relay gold medalist at the Olympics, at the World Championships, so I ask her which medal she cherishes the most. I think you'll be quite surprised at the one that she picks. And she gives us an insight into her diet, her technique, her daily routine, and also talks about working with the NBA star Carmelo Anthony. And that was for a fashion shoot for Valentino. All of that is going to be told as part of Tori's amazing story in this week's Best in the World with Richard Parr. And we couldn't have done it without your support and without you wanting to learn from the very best. And we're looking to create this community a little bit further using Patreon. And I've actually got a dictionary definition of what Patreon is. Patreon is a membership platform that provides business tools for creators to run a subscription content service as well as ways for artists to build relationships and provide exclusive experiences to their subscribers or Patreons. So that's what Patreon is, and The Best in the World with Richard Parr has been a part of Patreon for a few months now. But we really do need your help. We need your support. And what you can do is you can support us with a little bit of money. It starts as low as, as $1, but there, there's different tiers. And, and the more that you contribute, the more you get out of the service and the more you help us produce it. So what you can do is go to patreon.com forward slash best in the world. Take a look at that. See if you want to be part of this community. See if you want to continue to help us produce these podcasts because I've got some really great guests coming up and I'd like to get even more. But there comes a point where I can only do it for free for so long. So if you do get a chance to support us, I'd really appreciate it. I'll read it out to you one more time. It's Patreon dot com forward slash best in the world and on the show notes page of this podcast there's a link to it as well so i'd really appreciate it if you do get a moment to check it out and and support the show all right let's get to it it's episode 100 people i can't wait for you to hear it it is my conversation with the women's 100 meters world champion she is the best in the world it's tori Bowie. <laughs> The Best in the World Podcast with Richard Parr. Tori Bowie, 100 metres world champion. Welcome to The Best in the World with Richard Parr. Obviously, that victory was just a few months ago. How does it feel being called world champion? Um, You know, it's a great feeling. Um, I must say that it has me extremely motivated, um, and just want to continue to do more. Mm. What, what What are your current targets? What are your current goals? Um, so for 2018, um, I would love to show up and do 
and I would love to make the team in in the long jump. Mm. Um, you know, outside of that, um, I just plan to run more two hundreds and um, just just kind of see where the season takes me. Mm, fantastic, because you were initially more of a, a long jumper, weren't you? And then you you made the transition to more sprinting in the last few years. But when did that happen? Um, it happened in year of 2014. Okay, so I, um, I don't know. It just, it happened, everything happened really fast. My life changed really fast. I went to, I made the team for the 2014 team. I think it was held in Poland that year. And, you know, I went in and I was ranked like number one in the world and things like that. And I got there and, and it and it just didn't go well. I, I must say, I think I got there and didn't even make the finals um, of the long jump. And I remember calling my manager afterwards, and I was just really upset. And I just wanted to like make a change. I wanted to do something different with my life. I wanted to just I don't know. I just wanted a, a challenge, and um, we decided that I would. I decided I wanted to focus on the sprints, and she just found me a sprint coach, and I just came out here and tried it out for two weeks, and I've been here ever since. I'm now a world champion at it so it seems to be a, a good decision <laughs> well when you were going through that process was there even a thought of stepping away from athletics completely um I think I've thought about stepping away from athletics completely a few times <laughs> not just once oh okay um you know I think that's just how it is when things are not going well and you know, we feel defeated at the moment. So, yeah, I felt like that a few times. But I have a great support team, you know, a great support system overall. And, you know, everyone has managed to try to keep my head together. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you be doing if you weren't Tori Bowie, the uh, the world champion sprinter? Um, If I wasn't at this, at the, at this moment right now? Um, um, at this moment, or, or or back in those more difficult days and those difficult moments. Oh, that's a hard question because I don't know what I'll be doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I know that I know in previous years that I always wanted to be a dentist, and I kind of got off track with that. You know, when I chose the college, that it didn't even have a dentistry program. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so <laughs> so I kind of got off track with that real fast. Um, but, yeah, I kind of always wanted to be a dentist. And I said I wanted to, like, fix smiles and things like that. Um, so I don't, I'm not sure what I'd be doing right now. That's a hard question. Oh, wow. And you mentioned there that you had some difficult moments where you you contemplated moving away from athletics. Has there been one biggest failure in your career which you actually feel has helped you improve that has has made you better is there one turning point one moment which you found really hard but have actually appreciate now um I think the moment that I appreciate the most is when I saw my hamstring in 2014 um I was at a diamond league meet in, out in Birmingham that year and I tore my hamstring and you know that was my first injury ever while doing athletics and you know I feel like it just changed my entire career overall because at that moment I had to learn how to I learned to appreciate therapy you, <laughs> <laughs> and you know I learned to appreciate just stretching and eating right and things like that so at that moment I feel like that's what changed my career. Mm. What, what do you like when you're injured are you, are you grumpy or do you uh, take it for what it is? Doing the injury? When, when, um, after you suffer the injury, you know, some people can really not cope with them very well mentally. How, how do you cope? Um, In the beginning, I think it was real tough in the beginning, you know, mentally, because I didn't know what to expect. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people come, not come back from injuries, if that makes sense. Mm. But um, so I suffered a little bit in the beginning mentally, but overall um once I was determined once I made my mind was determined to come back from the injury I think things just started going more smoothly as far as recovering Mm. and you mentioned eating more 
uh, healthy there. Obviously, that that's one thing we discuss a lot in this program because we're trying to find out what you do to become the very best. Give us an idea of what your diet looks like. What, what do you typically eat in a day? My diet is probably not um, anyone else's. It wouldn't be anyone else's typical diet, oh, my gosh, because <laughs> I don't have, like, a lot of sugars in my diet. You know, most of my sugars come from probably Powerade, Gatorade, you know, probably sweet potatoes or something like that. So I'm, I'm more of an um, organic eater, you know, um, just a lot of fruits and vegetables and you know, I get my meats here and there, and so um, <laughs> not a lot of not a lot of you know cookies, and you get what I'm saying. Mm. Do you cook? Yeah. Well, what, what, what's your I top cook, dish? I cook. My top dish would be probably my fishing grits. I love fishing. I love grits. So. <laughs> okay, I'm English here. You're gonna have to explain grits to me, Tori. What what's a grits? I think grits is more like a porridge. Okay. Um, yeah, it's more like a porridge. You know, we just throw some butter in with some sugar and yeah, mm. cook some fish to go along with it. So I think that's probably my best dish right now. Oh, sounds good. And obviously, you travel the world with your job, competing all around the globe. Do you take any particular food or anything with you which you might not be able to get elsewhere? Probably just protein bars or something like that. Just to try to make sure I'm getting some type of fuel while I'm on the road. Mm. Um, Are you a good traveler? Do you, do you enjoy that part of the the experience? Um. Well, that's where my weakness come in it because I'm real strict about what I put into my body. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to traveling, I'm, I'm, I'm usually, I usually get a little distracted (laughs) (laughs) because it's not my norm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, right now that's something that I'm trying to learn to appreciate still. Mm. Um, Yeah. And we mentioned some of your food there. And again, we like to get an idea of, of what your training day is like. Why don't you just give us an idea of what a typical training day is like for you? Like the time you get up, how long you're training for, what you're working at, please? Uh, I'm usually waking up around 7.30. Um, trying to get out to do about 8.30 and I'm still usually late. I'm working on that too. <laughs> and um uh, I'm supposed to be at practice around nine. And um we usually finish every day around one thirty, two o'clock. And then um so I usually start my session at the track every day. I'm at the track for about two hours or so, two and a half hours or so. Um I may take a tiny little break in between my track session and my weight session, try to grab some lunch. And then I'm usually heading up to the gym right afterwards to try to get my strength work in. Mm. And and when is when is your day done? And and how do you unwind? Um, my day is normally over probably around three o'clock. You know, after therapy. Um, and then I get back home around three thirty. You know, and that's when I start my, I, that's when I begin to wind down. I'm trying to take a shower. I'm trying to get some good food in my system and recover for the next day. Mm. Do you, uh, do you read? Do you watch TV shows? What, what what are you doing when you're just chilling? Um, typically like I'm doing now, I'm usually trying to, I'm usually on a call. I'm usually, um, <laughs> um, you know, I'm reading, um, yeah, watching some TV shows, trying to catch up with my family. I stay in touch with my family um, a lot. I'm very close to my family. Um, just And just, you know, just cre- being creative, just trying to come up with different, different mm. um, avenues for poor boys. The Best in the World Podcast with Richard Parr.
We'll learn more from Tori in just a moment. But if you're listening to this podcast, it probably means that you're interested in audio content. And as well as podcasts, what's really great to listen to is audiobooks. And it's something that I do all of the time using Audible. And the people at Audible are offering you a free 30-day trial to test out their service. All you've got to do is go to audibletrial.com forward slash best. That's audibletrial.com forward slash best. And it includes one free audiobook download. And I'm going to give you a recommendation today. It's one by the comedian Joe Lysett. It's called Parsnips Buttered. I know I have a podcast about sport, but I'm more than just sport. I like all different types of genre, in particular comedy. And Joe is an English stand-up comedian. He's been on many different chat shows in the UK and he does a lot of stand-up throughout the country and he has created his first audiobook uh, his first book as well called Parsnips Buttered and it actually reminds me a bit of a book I really loved about 10 years ago it's called The Time Wasters Diaries by Robin Cooper I haven't actually checked it's on Audible I should check that out but just as a, a normal paperback hardback book I read that book and I absolutely loved it and Robin would effectively write all of these random slightly pointless letters to these companies and it's something similar that Joe Lysett has done uh, normally in in the face of bureaucracy normally to things against parking fines or the people which own his office space it's a very very funny book little bit random at times I'll be honest he, he has quite a interesting sense of humor not very common sense of humor but I really enjoyed it I highly recommend it so if you do decide to use audible you do decide to use your one free credit on an audiobook I highly recommend Joe Lysip's Parsnips Buttered go and check that out go to audibletrial.com forward slash best to try out their service and perhaps listen to Joe Lysip's book all right let's return to my conversation with the best in the world it is the women's 100 meters world champion Tori Bowie the best in the world podcast with Richard Parr. You mentioned your family there. Uh, who has been the, the, the biggest influence on, on your life and your career? Um, that's a hard question because right now I'll probably say my sister and, um, my dad right now. Mm-hmm. Um, my grandmother has been the greatest influence in my life overall. You know, she's the person who rescued me um, at the age of two, you know, when I went into foster care. Um, you know, she kind of rescued both me and my sister and, and raised us both. Um, but, you know, right now I say within my career, it's my sister and my father. Okay, and obviously uh, the story of your your grandmother raising you and your sister, and and she'd already had quite a a few children of her own that she'd raised as as well. What was life like growing up there, and and when when did you also realise when you were growing up that athletics was going to be your world? It was going to be what you're going to do, or, or, or did that? just happen naturally well and this has always been my life you know um growing up I never was allowed to just like you know wake up and sit around you know you wake up and my grandmother basically told me to go outside and and (laughs) find something productive to do so I was always outside with my, my um, older cousins, you know, where we were playing basketball or um, racing, fishing. It was always something to do. So this has been basically how I was raised my entire life and kind of how I've been involved into the F I am today. Mm, fantastic. And, of course, your sister was uh, a very good athlete as well. Did it help having a bit of sibling rivalry? Did you have sibling rivalry, in fact? 
You know, we did. Um, I think we, we had that rather than we just didn't put the heart. It was always like, you know, we've been competitive or secretive. Because uh, my sister and I both did the 100 meter in high school. Even Although we never trained for it or we never took it seriously, but we we both did it. And um, uh, it was always fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. During uh, college, you were, you mentioned basketball there. You were also a very good basketball player. How, how seriously did you take the basketball? Could that have been another avenue for you in, instead of athletics when you were growing up? Yeah, it could have been because I had to make a decision in high school. I had to decide whether or not I wanted to choose restaurant, whether I wanted to choose cars, and I ended up making a decision to choose track and field. I had scholarships for um, both for both sports. And wh- why why athletics in the end? So obviously it was the gr- the right decision, as you, as you proved. But <laughs> what what was the feeling at the time? Um, just marrying all down. You know, I was like, oh my god, I'm not even. I, at the time, I was like playing the position. The four. Go- I was playing the position as a four, and mm-hmm. that's considered as the forward position and I was like um with my height and size I feel like when I went to college I wasn't probably going to get much playing time so I feel like I just should have just decided to focus on athletics Mm, fantastic and obviously you then become a, a professional athlete and you go to Beijing and you earn a bronze medal in the in the 100 meters how, how was that world championship experience for you um i mean that world championship experience was just you know i was just lost <laughs> lost wow because yeah lost because i didn't even know what i was doing or where where i was you know, I just kind of like became a professional athlete in 2014, and then 2015, I ended up being at the World Championships, mm. um, competing for a title. Didn't even really know what I was competing for at the time. Um, but it was fun, and, you know, I've learned from it. Yeah, what were the biggest things you learned, Tori? Um, I've learned how to compete. Um, since then, since 2015, I've learned how to compete, and um, I've learned actually what it takes to to actually become a champion. So, um, I just used 2015 as a stepping stone to get where I'm at now. Mm. What What are those things then to become a champion? What, what can Can you explain them? Um. Well, you know, I think from 2015, I come into a program and. I didn't actually know what kind of work it takes to become a champion. You know, I come in, I come into the program, and I and I and I um, and I would do the work. Don't get me wrong, I would do the work or the entire program I'm supposed to do, but I didn't know what kind of effort or what kind of determination that it actually takes to put in. You know, to become the champion, and along the years, you know, that's. Um, that's what I've learned. <laughs> that it takes a little bit more than what we're actually doing. Mm. Have you spoken to any previous champions and, and tried to learn from them? Um, no, I I didn't get. I haven't spoken to any previous champions. I wish I would have. Mm. Um, yeah, it's for me. It's just been more of a learning experience. Like, oh, I fell a little short this time, and you know, it always falls back to me I was like well maybe if I would have you know not skipped a gym day or gym session <laughs> <laughs> or you know maybe if I would have put a little bit more weight on the bar or you know it always was goes back to just being a learning experience from what I didn't do mm. and, and, and I mentioned uh, former champions there as well and uh, fast forward a, a year later you're at the Rio Olympics and you you earn a silver medal um but one of the people you beat there was shelly ann fraser price who is one of the greatest sprinters of all time uh how was rio for you with, with what you had in mind what were what, what were your goals for rio to begin with 
Um, I mean, the, the, the perfect scenario would have been to leave with three gold medals. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know. I don't really know if I had goals for real. I just wanted to, I think my goal was to try to leave with some hardware in every event. Mm. And, um, you know, just to show that, you know, I was here, you know, it's my first Olympics and I would have been just happy to leave with hardware ever, and with, I would have been happy to leave with hardware in every event. I think I did that, so I'm um, I'm extremely thankful for for my results in Rio. Mm, yeah, a, a bronze in in the two hundred, one hundred meters silver, and then gold as part of the relay. Uh, is there one of those that that mean the most to you? I think the one that means the most to me is my bronze, and that's because. That's I got my bronze in the 200 meter, and I remember going into the finals of the 200 meter, and I remember being so I was I was exhausted, and I was like, "There's no way I can finish this race." And I got on the line, and I was like, "My goal was to finish," and I ended up getting you know a bronze medal. So that's my favorite one. Mm. Yeah, it's I, I guess it's about what what you define as well, isn't it? And 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 yeah, that that bronze is is what what you you achieved that's fantastic um moving on a year later you're in london you've had a bronze in the 100 at the world championships you've had a silver in rio and then you got the gold in london did you just feel that it was going to be your year with that almost progression that you'd had No, I thought it was going to be my year because of the mentality that I found. <laughs> mm. um, and, you know, I um, and, and, and it takes a lot of confidence to go out there and, and think that you're that you're the one to be, you know. Mm. And I found I finally found that in in 2017 that, you know, hey, I want to go show up and I want to be the athlete to be in. Um, that's what I found in 2017, the confidence and the mentality to have to actually win it. Anyone can have, you know, the physical ability, you know, and I think it just, the mentality just takes you to a whole different level. Mm. With, with that mentality, has it become part of your pre-race process? Is there anything you in particularly do before a race? No, the mentality comes from putting the work in at training. Mm-hmm. You know, um, like I said in previous years, there's things I didn't do, and didn't, I just didn't come in with the confidence I needed. So, it's, but yeah, the confidence just comes from just doing, taking care of the uh, work outside of the competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, on, on the day of a race, though, do you have any particular routine or ritual that you go through? Um, typically, no. I'm just trying to stay relaxed, you know, just trying to stay relaxed, trying to make sure I have enough nutrients in my system and, um, just kind of trying to think about the training that I've done. That's normally what I try to, um, do on competition day and, you know, trying to call my sister and my father and, you know, we're talking about everything and they trying to keep me relaxed. Mm. And that 100 metres final was incredible and at such amazing speed. I, I don't know if, if you have an answer, but you, you, were, you were quite behind Talu at the time and then maybe the last 30 to 40 metres you caught up with her and then you just dipped to beat her at the line. What was going through your mind from about halfway onwards? Um, I think I stopped thinking about halfway. <laughs> <laughs> That's what made you go faster. I don't faster. think I was thinking anymore. <laughs> yeah, I stopped thinking. Because uh, uh, I know my I know my weakness and my strength. And, you know, um, I think my weakness is, is in the beginning of the race or has been the beginning of the race, come out the blocks. And I know where my strength is, you know, it's in the, the last 40 meters of the race. So, you know, I think after, after about the last 50, I just stopped thinking and, and just <laughs> went after it went forward did you think you'd won well i thought i did but i didn't know 
yeah. because they, you know, it hasn't, it wasn't on the screen or anything. But yeah, I just tried to sit there and wait until they um, put it on the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always dipped to the line like you did? Because it, it was quite a thrust towards the end. Well, um, yeah, I always lean like that. Um, if it's a close race, then you better believe that Tori Boo is going to lean. <laughs> so I'm not going to leave nothing out there on the track. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did at, um, in London, and, and it just so happened that it worked that day. Has life changed since that day? Not really. Um, I just try to keep things the way this it's been been. Um, I feel like, I feel like, why change now? You know, this is working. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just continue to keep this going. And, you know, that's been my mentality. And I and I just pray that it can stay that way. Mm. Uh, and I've seen away from the track that you recently did some modeling with Valentino. How was that? It was so fun. <laughs> um, it was fun. I enjoyed it. You know, um, I got to take us take a you know i just got to go to a different a totally different scenario if that makes sense mm. you know sports world to the fashion world and i don't know i mean i would love to do more of it oh fantastic and you, you spent some time with Kamalo anthony as well right oh yeah what was he like so, um he was a real laid back dude real down to earth um, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't thought that, but yeah, he, he's, he's Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And, and, and you're Tory Bowie. Uh, I, I just want to mention one thing, cause you mentioned, uh, uh, becoming a dentist. I've actually just seen on my desk that, uh, I'm, I'm due my, uh, appointment for my reminder for my checkup. So I need to get on to that. Um, thank you for reminding me. Uh, it's been really good okay. to speak to you today, Tori. Uh, just before we go, can you just let us know where we can continue to follow your journey on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, or anything like that, please? Sure. So you can follow me on Instagram at one Tori Bowie. And at Twitter is just simply Tori Bowie. Um, I do have a website now, and it is called Tori. It's, it's, you can reach that um, by clicking, type in ToriBowie.net. Yep. We will get on to it. Well, Tori, it's been so great to talk to you. Thank you for being on the program, and thank you for being the best in the world. Oh, thank you so much for having me. The Best in the World Podcast with Richard Parr. It was really great to speak to Tori on the 100th episode of The Best in the World with Richard Parr. And we've spoken to some other athletics sprinting greats in the past. Maybe you want to go back to episode 40 when I speak to Veronica Campbell-Brown the multiple-time Olympic champion sprinter from Jamaica. I've also spoken to Darren Campbell. He was a 4 by 100 meters Olympic champion. That's all the way back at episode 12. I've also had the pleasure of speaking to other track and field stars, such as Katerina Stefanidi, the pole vault Olympic champion. That's episode 67. Episode 65 with Michelle Carter, the shot put Olympic champion. Jeff Henderson... That's episode 33, the long jump champion, Brian Clay. Episode 26, the Cathlon Olympic champion, the 10,000 meters world champion, Liz McColgan's episode 24. And coming up in a few weeks, I've got another relay superstar who has got an amazing story. I speak to Derek Redmond. You do not want to miss it. And to make sure that you don't miss it, make sure you subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, on Acast, on Stitcher, so even if you are having a very busy week forgetting about things, then you will have that podcast go straight into your phone, straight into your listening device, and it will remind you that you can listen and learn to the very best on the best in the world with Richard Parr. I'm absolutely delighted to have reached 100 episodes, and I really have learned a lot from these athletic superstars 
and I like to give a little bit more context. I like to give a few more of my news and views on a weekly email and you can sign up for it by going to sportachino.com forward slash email. I would love for you to be part of that community, part of the Patreon community, and I would love for you to listen to our next episode, episode 101, coming out next Thursday. You do not want to miss it. Thank you very much for listening. I've been Richard Parr, and I will speak to you again soon. Goodbye. The Best in the World podcast with Richard Parr.